Thankful for all the deacons and deaconess and trustees that are here today. When I was growing up, the hymnals used to be printed in the bulletin. And we sang at least three hymns a worship service. But at least we knew how to praise God in other ways other than just through words. Brother Milligan, thank you for allowing me to walk with you through your beginning ministry steps. Very honorable and humble young man you are. I thank God for your existence. Amen. Beams of heaven as I go Through this wilderness below Guide my feet in peaceful ways Turn my midnight into days when in the darkness I will grow, faith always sees a star of hope. And soon from all life's grief and danger, I shall be free someday. I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I know, if Jesus leaves me, I'll make it home someday. Our scripture lesson for the morning, as it was so eloquently read by Reverend Turner, is found in the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter. Our lesson was the 9th to the 20th verse, but I'm going to start with the 15th verse, where we'll find these words. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I'm going to wrap our scripture lesson. I'm going to use that 17th verse as our scripture focus, and I'm going to wrap that with a subject from which to preach, the signs do still follow. The signs do still follow. Let us pray. O eternal God, our heavenly Father, you are the Father of us all with whom we live, move, and have our being. Just a moment in thy presence gives us fullness of joy, and on thy right hand of pleasure forevermore. Lord, we come in Jesus' name because the word says, can nobody get to you except through him. And Lord, we don't know everything about your word, but we know that it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And if we hide its words in our hearts, we can't sin against you. So we ask you to open our spiritual eyes and we may see your glory all around us. Open our ears and we may hear things good for both our mind and our heart's sake. And prepare our hearts right now for the preaching and teaching of your word. And if there's going to be any peace in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and these United States of America or in this world, let it begin with me, your servant's prayer. In your son's name we pray, amen. amen. The signs do still follow. This particular chapter in Mark is a chapter where 
it records what happened after the resurrection or during the resurrection. Remember, Jesus was in glory with his father and God had tried a whole lot of ways by which to speak to us as his people to give us redirection after Adam slipped in the Garden of Eden. And, and then he's tried monarchs, he tried major and minor prophets, he's tried chief priests and minor priests. He even tried Miss Ellie at the corner store, but nothing seemed to work. And so he looked around heaven one day and he said to himself, well, what can I do now? Who can I send? And you know, angels come back and forth and they said, well, Lord, we'll go because we go to and fro all the time. He said, no, no, I'm not going to send y'all. Y'all have a designated duty. And he just couldn't think what he could do because you remember, Brother Mike remembers this, he came to earth once wrapped in the name of a person called Melchizedek. But then Jesus said to him, and this is just with my divine imagination, Daddy, I'll go. And he didn't just come as a man, though. He had to fold himself up in infancy and dwell in the sanctuary of Mary's womb, an unwed teenage mother. Now, let us be careful about how we treat these teenage mothers we come in contact with. Jesus' mother was an unwed teenage mother. Her and Joseph were engaged. They weren't married just yet. And so we have to be careful how we ridicule that, and we have to be careful how we ridicule adoption, because you know Joseph was his earthly father, designated by God to raise him as a carpenter's son in his hometown. We have to be careful how we treat God's word and how we treat God's people. We have to be mindful of the fact that just because we wear robes, just because we can play the organ, or just because we teach Sunday school, doesn't give us a license to look down on anybody. It doesn't make us any better or any worse than anybody. We're all in, on this surge on together. An alarming trend in the 21st century church is the accepted absence of signs, wonders, miracles, and healing. Many people believe in it, but simply have not seen the spiritual manifestations of God. The result is an uncertainty and a lack of confidence in the operational spiritual gifts and faith. When Jesus left, he left with certain instructions. He said, go ye. He didn't say stay in here. He didn't say celebrate the microphone or celebrate the pew. He said, go. And one of the reasons why he said go is that this is a job that continues. Once we've arrived, we don't just sit down and go on vacation and act like we're a club med for the rest of our days. We have to continue to go. And, and, and once upon a time in the church, things happened. People were transformed. The sick got hands laid on them. You almost have to pay somebody to go visit the sick anymore. That's a shame. Jesus went and visited the sick. And if we're going to be servants of his, we have to mimic him. The absence of manifestation makes it difficult to have absolute trust in God's present ability to do anything. So we find men and women, boys and girls, hesitant to step out and or take chances on God because they have never seen or experienced God under such circumstances. You must know that these young girls don't just come here to dance because they find it fun. That's part of it. But somewhere along the line, they've seen some adults that they want to emulate. They see other people in service. When they come to church, they see an adult who's concerned or they run into Miss Ann in the kitchen who might just give them a few potato chips or something. I don't know. But children learn what they live, and so the church is not just a place for us to come and, and, and rest. It's an opportunity for us to give greater service based on the way that the Lord has blessed us. We're not blessed to rest. We're blessed to be a continual blessing. This weakens the effect of the word because Many of us who speak the word don't really have faith in its ability. And then we find a whole lot of people that claim that they are the great leaders of whatever society and they don't know the word of God. Because if they knew it, they would walk it. Daddy used to say, your mouth and feet ought to meet. And if it doesn't, something's wrong. The more unfamiliar we become with spiritual and miraculous manifestations of God, the more inhumanistic we become. I can't say that I believe in a God. I can't say I'm Christ Jesus, king of my life, and don't believe in the fact that he can lift the dead from the grave. Don't believe the fact that someone who's lowered through the roof can go back up healed. Don't believe that the blind man that met them folk before they went into the temple 
that ask for money, and they say, we don't have that, but in the name of Jesus, we'll give you what we have. Because through the Spirit of the Lord, all things are possible. And it's only through the Spirit of the Lord, not us, not our PhDs, not our houses in the gated community, not our long trucks with five doors and we won't give nobody a ride to church in. It's the Holy Spirit. That's what makes the difference. And you can't be appointed unless you're anointed. Hear me, somebody. If you find somebody in position and they don't have the anointing on their life, you better question whoever appointed them because you can't really be appointed by God unless you're anointed. It's time for us to change. It's time for us to stop meeting in falsehood. What are you saying, preacher? How can we meet every Sunday? How can we come every Tuesday? How can we attend Sunday school and what we do doesn't mimic the word of God. Signs and miracles happen, y'all. And when we're actively activated and moving in the spirit of the Lord, things should happen for the good of people, for the good of God's people. The stranger shouldn't have to ask five people before somebody gives them help. The stranger should be able to come here if the kitchen is open and get a piece of bread. The stranger should be able to be guided in the right direction without us having to Google, uh, Google me this. No! Our living is in vain if we don't start living by the word of God. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect. I'm not perfect. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and I still sin sometimes. I told you about what I do in traffic with the windows up. I speak in an unknown tongue when they cut me off. I do, but I'm in the car by myself. And I ask the Lord to forgive me. But we have to strive to be more like Jesus. We have to strive to be more like his word. And when we say that we're servants, when we say we're representative of his band, we have to go where the people are. We have to help people. We can't be afraid to touch somebody. Jesus said in Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. My aunt down in Lunenburg County, Virginia. Funny thing, I, I, my parents sent me down there one summer. I said, they must have lost their mind. They do some weird stuff down here. <laughs> she could smell the rain coming. Y'all get on in this house. Y'all things come on in the house. For what? The sun's out. But it's going to rain. I'm looking around. I said, Lord, she must have bumped her head in that kitchen. <laughs> and sure enough, you could see the clouds coming up the road. She saw a sign of the rain. She felt the rain coming. So when we say that we love the Lord and we say we're members of Zion Church or God's body, if there's no sign, Mark 16, 17 says, these signs shall follow them that believe. There ought to be some evidence if you say you believe. You ought to be found guilty of it. I mean, if you're going to accuse me of being a lover of Christ, I will be convicted because I do love Christ. And signs and wonders show up behind that. This has never changed. The signs still follow. The signs are not following. If the signs are not following, we need to examine ourselves. We need to examine our walk with the Lord. Signs do still follow believers. One of the reasons why my godson, Jeremiah, is so excited about the Lord is because he had a great teacher in Sister Cheryl Kay. Signs do follow. Mark 16, 20 tells us, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. I want to accentuate that amen by declaring that these things still occur in abundance at other places. We can't throw rocks at the people that are doing the work. We can't get upset because some places are overflowing and our parking lot is half empty some days. We can't get upset when a family that's sitting on the front row bereaving their loved one can't have somebody come by and shake their hand. We can't get upset when Digging Downs is the only one here most times during the week when the doors open up. We can't get upset about that. We have to dare to be different. We have to dare to do different. I sat on the front row and it surprised me to see so many of you come by and just some of y'all just hit my shoulder. It doesn't take a lot to do the work of the Lord, and it doesn't take one person. It takes all of us. 
I'm not meant to do it all. Brother Adams is not meant to do it all. Brother Sonny Phillips is not meant to do it all. But I give Digging Phillips a lot of credit because even after that stroke, he continues to work diligently for the Lord. Many people limit their faith in God because they are thinking of themselves. They are concerned about what others might think of them. If things don't happen like they said it was supposed to happen. They're not man or woman enough to get on their knees and wait on what thus saith the Lord to them. They run to somebody humanistic like them who might not know the Lord, who might not pray, who might not be saved. There's a whole lot of people running around acting like they know Jesus. They don't know Jesus. They still calling that Miss Cleo line. They're afraid they will step out on a limb and nothing will happen. An essential element in being used by God is to quit thinking and simply respond by faith. A lot of times when the Lord lays something on the heart of a believer to do for humanity, we have to have 15 meetings. We have to have a second and a third. We have to all be in favor in order to do the Lord's work. He said, go ye. So if we're going to cast a net, if we're going to feed somebody, if we're going to go help somebody, we don't have to vote five times and meet 15 days for that. It's in God's word, just go. We don't have to have a special collection for that. We don't have to have flyers on the table in the hallway to do God's work. What? The signs do deal follow. We limit our ability to be blessed because we don't have faith in this work. And because we don't have faith in the work, the Lord knows we don't have faith in him. That roof doesn't always keep leaking because you had a bad roofer. Bad things don't continually happen just because, by happenstance. Every action has a reaction. Every circumstance has a consequence. And when we're not walking in the way of the Lord, you just can't go willy-nilly and expect nothing to happen. Daddy said, be in the house when the street lights come on. And if that light was on about 10 minutes and I wasn't in the house, there was a consequence for me for that. And he kept his promise. <laughs> he kept his promise. I believe the Lord keeps his promises because Daddy kept his promise with me. I still feel it sometimes. This is about God. God doesn't want us to do his part for him. He doesn't need us to do his part for him. But he does require that we do our part. We have a responsibility, my family, to do what thus saith the Lord. There's more to us than just coming into and going out of the place of worship. There's more involved with our salvific resolve than selling food and sharing in festivals. When Jesus turned the tables in that place that wasn't an actual marketplace, he was more than just upset. He was setting the stage and the tone on what should and should not take place in the place designated for God's worship. Naturally, we are concerned about bylaws and search committees, yet there is so much more more issues that need to be addressed, more issues confronting the Christian church, issues facing our whole missionary enterprise, and the signs I've witnessed reflect the need for us to get involved in the community of our fellowship. I'd like to discuss with you some morning some of the problems confronting our schools. I would like to discuss with you one morning when you're able to be serious about it, the family institution. The DNA of our creator's design for his created. I would like to meet with you one morning when you're ready to sit down and really form a table of brotherhood in this community. Not black or white or red or brown, but that one day we might become a multicultural community in our church. I'd like to sit down with you one day and discuss what God is really concerned with. Not how well we're dressed, but how good a neighbor are we at this northwest corner of Broad and Venango Street. I want to sit down with you one day and discuss how diligently we can get together and 
discuss and, and parlay over the word of God. I want to sit down and discuss with you how a man who that chairs draped for digging James, Marvin Hollis, what it really means to be a servant of God. How when you're a servant of God, you can be humble. How when you're a servant of God, when somebody comes to you, you have to know that God sent them to you. So don't run and try to find somebody else. Help them yourself. Now, before you accuse me of being too concerned about things that don't really matter, allow me to remind you of the fact that we were led here for more than just worship of ourselves. We're here to make a difference and to serve the Lord's will and work unflinchingly. Let me say to you that our nation may never be the same. Our society is vastly changing. We are caught in an in escapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly affects all of us indirectly. We have to stop trying to act like we're Stevie Wonder and pull the shades off of our eyes. We have to start trying to make a difference in the lives of our community and in the lives of our neighbor. Many Christians limit their relationship to God and to their church because they think just coming to church is the answer. However, in Mark 16, 15, Jesus tells us to go throughout the world preaching the gospel to everyone everywhere. Those who do that will see things happen. When we do the will of the Lord, our lives will continue to transform. When we do the will of the Lord, our roofs will stop leaking and our refrigerators will stay full of food. When we do the will of the Lord, we won't have to be complaining about stuff that doesn't matter because the things that matter have mattered and we've done the Lord's will. They will have testimonies. I have a thousand testimonies. One day when I was at work, they were calling me on the radio. The guy pulled up next to me in the car and said, man, they've been calling your number on the radio all night. What's wrong with you? I didn't know where I was. Went back to the station and got my things, was on my way home, and the Holy Spirit said, turn left and go to the hospital. I was having a massive stroke. My mother and my cousin came to visit me in York there. I was laying in the hospital, paralyzed on one side, couldn't see out of this eye. I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I got to get an elevator for the front of the house and all kind of fixtures in the house. I messed up. <coughs> then I laid there for a minute, and I saw them wheel a brother down the hall that had been burned over 90% of his body. And I said, Lord, have thine own way. We will have testimonies when we do the will of the Lord. And, and when we're blessed to be able to do some more things, like Brother Phillips, we'll get in our car if we can and drive. He's walking with a cane. And yet he stops in North Philly and picks up the Diggs family and brings them to church. Come on, somebody. Does it take all that? No. It just takes your willingness. It takes our willingness. The signs do follow, still. But they don't follow something that didn't happen. You know, I told you, I've told this story before. I thought, you know, I see clouds, and clouds are puffy and cute, whatever. They teach you that in school. You make little signs in art, and you put cotton balls, and make that clouds or whatever. But I used to see these long clouds. And I said, Daddy, why did the Lord form those long clouds? He said, no, boy, there ain't no cloud. That's a heat signature from the airplane. That just gives you a sign that the airplane went by. Hello. The signs do follow. But no work, no sign. If Elijah had not been convinced of rain, he would never send his servant to look for an approaching cloud. God still needs someone to be an Elijah. Could any of us be the next Elijah? Jesus is still the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still the savior, healer, and deliverer that the word says he was. The people that know him shall be strong and do exploits. That's Daniel 11, 28. Few things will renew our faith and excitement like a fresh testimony of personal faith. That's why we have to share our stories, whether they be good or bad. We don't know what the other one's going through, but sometimes if Sister Phyllis and I, we pray, that's my prayer partner. And she says some stuff with me, and the next thing you know, I've gone through that thing. And I said, man, Phyllis, we're just talking about this. And then it gives you the faith to move on. We're not living this thing independently, y'all. 
It's a collective. I mean, a solo is good, but don't you like the backup of the choir when you sing a solo? Mike, don't you like the backup of the choir? He sings a lot of solos. They pick him for a lot of solos here. The solos are good, but it's good to have the accompaniment of a choir. I'm sure the guy could play the violin by himself, but it's good to have the orchestra. Michael Jordan or that other fella from uh, Cleveland, uh, LeBron James, can play well enough on their own, but it's better with a team. And remember, as we spell team, there's no I in team. Few things will renew the excitement of God's freshness in our lives and our personal testimonies as we are found doing the will of his word. There's everything to gain and nothing to lose when we follow God's word and we work in it diligently. There's everything to gain and nothing to lose when we love our neighbor as ourselves. There's everything to gain and nothing to lose when if we feel like we have to talk about something, we talk about God to somebody else and not each other. Everything to gain and nothing to lose when my brothers wrong me for me to get on my knees and go to God in prayer. Because like Daddy said, you can't take a Volkswagen to a Cadillac dealer and get it fixed. Many a brother has discovered through basketball, Sister Shiny, that there is no I in team. Many a sister has discovered if I carry myself a certain way and I let that hem out of my garment, I will command the respect of others. Many a teenager has discovered that God will. And even though my mama and daddy can't get a loan from the bank, somehow God will make it possible for me to get to college. This opened the door to many other similar faith-building testimonies that continue to unfold. I want to contend to you, my church family, that signs still do follow. God wants to do great things through our faith as well. I encourage you to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Signs still do follow true believers. Signs are not just there for decoration. Signs are letting the people know that come behind us that there is a way and God will make that way if we trust in him. As I take my seat, I want to remind you that good, better, best, never let it rest until good becomes better and better becomes best. I'm Harvey Holloway Jr. and I thank God for approving this message. Going to church open. Is there one? Somebody who might have been baptized 40 years ago or 50 years ago and you want to make sure your assurance policy is in order. Yeah, your assurance. You know, if you don't have insurance and you get in an accident, all you have is a wreck in the road. The same is true in life. If you get your assurance policy together with the Lord, there's an opportunity for you to be delivered. Won't, won't you come? Is there one? Or maybe you're just new to the area and you don't want to leave your church membership. You don't have to but you should be under a covering. So we don't mind you joining us on the watch care. We want to fellowship with you. Or maybe you missed the prayer hour. Maybe you missed the garden of prayer experience that we shared a few moments ago and you need prayer. Won't you come? These deacons and deaconess and trustees, they love the Lord and they want to introduce his loving kindness to your life. Won't you come? Come on, choir. Come 
We have a report coming from.